Our first guest tonight is a Tony and Emmy-nominated actress you know from films like American Beauty, The Kids Are All Right, and Nyad, for which she just received her fifth Academy Award nomination. She stars in and executive produces Apples Never Fall, which premieres March 14th on Peacock. Let's take a look. The whole party is just ruined. Oh, no. I'm so sorry. You did all that work. I'm the one who should be sorry. I shouldn't have asked all those questions. You did nothing wrong, nothing. Oh, oh. You okay? Yeah, yeah, I was just... Nobody can break your heart like your own children. Please welcome to the show, Annette Benning, everyone! <laughs> Thank you so much for having me. There is much to congratulate you on, much to talk about, but maybe no higher honor has been bestowed on you recently than you received the Hasty Pudding Woman of the Year. Yes, I did. Did you know anything about this organization? I didn't know a lot about it. So the group at Harvard, they're all like serious people, like uh -huh. engineers and scientists and business people. And for fun, they have this theatrical club. And so there's this long tradition of, of sort of roasting people and honoring people. And so they so, basically reached out, said, we want to yes. give you our, uh, what is it called? The pudding pot. A hasty pudding award. And uh, this just speaks to how silly it is. Here you are being, <laughs> uh, receiving the award from, it looks like an astronaut in the cactus. <laughs> it is so seriously silly. It was a delight. Now, because again, award shows, you've been in a lot of them. They're a little stuffy. And you basically just sit the whole show and then you find out if you won or not. This, though, they worked you uh, really hard. Uh, are you, so you had to give out a haircut to receive your award? <laughs> I actually had to give him a haircut kind of like my own. Okay, so that yeah. was, uh, and then it seems like you're in a dance line here. <laughs> yes. Yeah, that was at the end of the parade. I mean, it's the silliest thing you cannot, can't yes, imagine. In case you were, you were in a, per you literally were in a parade. <laughs> Congratulations! Oh what my a God! Big it, it was so. It was a huge win. Um, I'm very was, happy for you. Really and uh, and apples uh, never fall. This is um, uh, the same author uh, who wrote uh, Big Little Lies. Right. And uh, did you know? Had you read the book before you got involved with the project? Uh, no, I hadn't read it yet. But they sent me the the work, and I they sent me the pilot, and I read the book. And there's also a great book on tape that yes. I listened to. It's extremely well done by an Australian actress who plays all the parts. And then I spoke to the showrunner who had this whole vision in her head. She's an incredibly articulate woman, Melanie Marnich. And so I thought this would be so much fun and so juicy. And it's a family story. I'm the youngest of four. I have four children in real life. And then in the story, I also have four kids. So, so. there you go. It's there right you go. in your wheelhouse. Exactly. And you got to film in Australia. Yes. Had you ever been? I had never been to Australia. And it is that was part of the reason I wanted to do it as well. It was like an incredible adventure. Although there are many dangerous animals in Australia. Have you heard about that? I have heard a couple of times that it's very rare for people to go there and come back alive. <laughs> Exactly, which so is, was the allure. Any of them? Um, well, there is something called a bull shark. A bull shark? That now, sounds like a worse version of a regular shark. <laughs> it is. Yeah. It is exactly that, and I'll tell you why. They have adapted. So, in this part of Australia, I was in the Gold Coast. There's like a lot of ocean, beautiful coastline, but there are all the, also these rainforests, and they have all these beautiful waterfalls and fresh water flowing down into the ocean. So the fresh water meets the salt water. Well, the bull shark has adapted and can live in either fresh or salt water. That's bad. That's really bad. <laughs> yeah. And I was a little unaware of it because I've, I'm really into swimming now. So I went to this fantastic canal and it's like, why aren't there more people in the water? Yeah. And I later found out was because it's in fact <laughs> Bull sharks, yeah. and they do attack and kill people regularly. Wow. However, I will also tell you, so at the towards the end of the shoot, you know, so you're an hour up into the mountains and there's this gorgeous rainforest. And we're, but we're in a, like a house, a cabin-y kind of thing. And someone said, you know, there's a python out there. There's a python in the front yard. I said, there's a python. And so 
yes, naturally, we all went out there, although the Australians are like, yeah, it's a python. Like, <laughs> right. And there was the python. And it wasn't like way up in the tree somewhere. It was like a tree that was right there, six foot long python. And they don't move quickly. Yeah. You know, but he was, he, she, whatever, right. eating a possum. Really? Yeah, the possum's leg was still sticking out of its mouth. <laughs> Oh my and God. when they open their jaws, you know, like if that's their jaw, their jaws go like that. <laughs> and it had the whole, it was incredible. I bet the, <laughs> I mean, I bet the possum thought they moved quickly. <laughs> <laughs> Good point. Yeah. But you know, you've heard the expression, something, someone sizes you up. Yeah. This is what pythons do. Really? They actually will spread themselves along something to see, well, can I, in fact, Consume this thing, whatever it is. Really? Yes, they and actually do that. They have little like uh, uh, centimeter marks. Yes. Along. Yeah. They have a measuring tape. <laughs> they're, they're, like the me <laughs> they're known as the measuring tape of the wild. <laughs> um, uh, did you get some tennis in while you were over there? There was some tennis because the story is about we we used to Sam Neal plays my husband and we are just retiring and we have been running a tennis academy our entire lives and so the whole family has been raised in this like ultra competitive atmosphere. And yes, I play, I was a tennis player like when I was a young woman. I, so we did get to play a lot of tennis. Do you feel like, do you still have good uh, muscle memory for your tennis days? Um, I was a really mediocre tennis player okay. when I was a kid, uh, but I did enter a tournament with my very dear friend, Joan Osborne, who is still my buddy. Okay. And Joan is like the opposite. She's super athletic, really, really good at tennis. When you're mediocre, those are the best partners. Exactly. So we, ordered, we, we entered a doubles tournament and we got a bye and then the next people didn't show up. Then we were in the finals and we lost. So we got a trophy. Oh, congratulations. Yes, thank you. That's, I mean. Thank you. That would, that would make a really bad documentary. <laughs> Uh, I have a lot more to ask you. We'll be right back with Annette after this.